Hi, I'm Professor E. Welcome to the robot program. In this episode, we'll show you how to control your Revolution JD using the mobile app. Let's join DJ in the studio to learn how. You don't just have to use a computer to control your robot, you can use multiple devices. DJ, why don't you tell us about those devices? Most definitely. Well, devices like mobile devices come in two different formats. You have either your iOS, which is iPhone, and made by Apple, of course, and you have iPads and iPhones. And then you have your Android devices, you know, such as Samsung tablets and Samsung phones. So in this, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to use the Apple iPhone. Now, uh, the first thing we want to do is you need to sign into the App Store to get the app. So let me do that and demonstrate how it's done. So we'll go to the App Store here and we'll search. And we're going to search for Easy Robot. And you'll find it here. And then there, of course, is Easy Builder. And we will download that and install onto your device. So you'll notice the icon for Easy Builder. We select that. The first thing you'll be presented with is a Terms of Use for Easy Builder. We'll scroll down and choose I agree after, of course, you read it. Read all of it. You bet. Now we need to create an account or register our, our account in the software so we can download the apps onto our device. So the same, same account that you've been using for all of your other Easy Robot downloads. I'll enter my account information here. You'll be presented with a menu that says success, or if it's not successful, it'll tell you that as well. Choose OK. Select Public Easy Cloud Apps. This menu presents you the ability to search for apps. There's 3,000 apps, actually over 3,000 apps, in our app store created by community members just like you. That's a lot. It is. We're going to use the Easy Builder JD default app. So don't select anything inside of this menu. Just choose the search button. And this will show you everything. This will show you everything that is Easy Robot certified. Oh, OK. So you won't get 3,000 apps. Fortunately. And if you scroll through here, you'll see they're all made by DJ Shures. That's this guy. And they're not actually made by me. I just get the privilege of having my name associated with all of the You're apps. the robot overlord. I'm the robot overlord. So we're going to choose the JD project and then choose download and install. It's going to download that app and install it onto your device so you can reload it anytime in the future. And here is the app. We're going to choose the connect button. And next, we want to turn our robot on. And face him lying down. Good. There we go. And select the Wi-Fi network. And then select your Wi-Fi category. And choose the Wi-Fi network for your robot. And once it's connected, return back to your app. And choose the connect button. Boom. It's just like in the software. You bet. Now, JD is initialized, and as you remember in the software, all of his joints are all not calibrated. It's a little crooked. Okay. Now, for these episodes, we're using a very uncalibrated JD. Uh, yours will, probably won't be this bad. So this is a good demo of what you need to do in order to calibrate these. So we're going to choose a servo profile button here. So choose new to create a new servo profile. Now, what we're going to do, the goal of the servo profile is to move the servos, as you can see here in this camera, to align them with the bracket. So I'm going to move the phone and use this camera to show you. I'm going to start with this, which is really off this joint here. I put my finger on the zero, and I'm going to slide it left and right to move it until the servo is lined up with the bracket. And I'll do the same with the bottom bracket. And then, of course, I'll turn the robot around and do the same on this side. So this is just like the servo calibration process that we used within the PC software. You're going to start near the body and work your way out, making sure that his arms and legs look like they're lined up. OK. And now we'll do his arms. So we'll do this arm first. Looks good. We'll flip them around and get this guy going. There. Okay. That looks that looks good. 
Looks straight. It does. Now, if during the calibration procedure, you hear the grippers vibrating like this. You hear in the microphone? Not that's, a good sound. That's bad. Right away, use the, the gripper adjustments to move the grippers so that you don't, uh, you don't have that noise. Because if they do that too long, the gripper motors will burn out because they're putting a lot of strain. That's unnecessary on those. Okay, let's give this servo profile a name. We'll choose JD is the name, and then I'll select that profile. And now we're back to our connection screen, and we'll choose back again. So you can use that servo profile every time you log in now with JD. You bet. Every time you load JD, reselect that profile, and you're off to the races. Okay, now that we're back in the main menu of the, uh, the main app of JD, we can start making JD do some awesome stuff. And this is where it gets a lot of real fun. For example, we could just push the stop button, to put him into his initialize or his uh, standing position, sorry. And I'll move him here in front of the camera so you can see him. And I'm going to use the fly action because fly is one of my favorite actions. Let's select that. Oh, JD, that I just love showing the fly to people because it was it's just so cool. And it was also created by, I think I mentioned this before in another video, by a grade five class in Houston, in Texas. So that is really, really neat. Uh, okay, what else are we gonna get JD to do? Well, let's get him to just walk. We can use the forward button here, make him walk forward. Of course, make him walk backwards. And we have other buttons here, like we can push the headstand button. This is, this is a fun one. That's great, isn't it? Pretty good. That's pretty good. And of course, we can have him sit down. It's gonna take a break. Take a break. And we can use the joystick on the right to, to, to control his camera, so we can move his camera around. And then we have a wave for sitting. And then to get him to stand up, we have two ways for him to stand up. One is called stand up back. We can push that one. You want to use that when he's needing to stand up backwards, much like he just did there. Now, if he's ever on his front because he fell over, you can push stand up forward to have him stand up from his forward position. And then we can have him do other things like start playing music and, of course, dancing, which is a lot of fun as well. But if I play this too long, I'll start dancing as well. Now, let's push the hamburger icon. Hamburger icon. Hamburger icon. So in mobile apps and on websites, you always notice in the top left, there's those three little lines or some sort of icon that you can click on to load up a menu. That's actually called a hamburger. There you go. There. Learn something new every day. Interesting new fact. So we'll choose the hamburger icon, and we will have many options that load up here. One is called RoboScratch. Let's choose that. Now, you're familiar with RoboScratch. You've seen it in previous episodes. It works on your mobile device. So we can create our own action for JD to do. That's right. So let's make a little program for JD. So let's scroll through the list, and you can see all the different things you can do. I'm going to come up with something on the fly here. Let's have JD walk forward for two seconds. And then let's have JD speak with the microphone and have him say, Hey, is anybody there? And then we'll back out. Now we'll have JD wait until it sees a face. Okay, so he's going to be looking for somebody's face. You'll be waiting just Waiting, forever. waiting until he sees it. Forever and ever. And forever. Yes. What if nobody comes? Then his batteries will die. <laughs> <laughs> and now that he's waiting for a face, the next thing we want him to do as soon as he sees somebody is, let's have him speak. I'm just going to use the regular microphone here. Okay. And I'm going to use the regular microphone. Now, Z slot zero has already been used. Let's select it and see what happens. Hey, is anybody there? Okay, that's already been used. Now let's select slot one. It's blank. We can put something there. Aha, I see you. Now we can back out. So you can record up to nine different audio clips that you could use. Let's have scroll up here and select action wait, and we're going to choose wave. So JD's going to speak, he's going to wave, and very last thing we want to do is take a photo. Here it is there. 
Great, so why don't we walk through our program before we execute it. So we have here that JD's gonna walk forward for two seconds, and then his microphone, and it's gonna wait, it's gonna do the entire audio clip before doing anything else. It's gonna play whatever we recorded on channel zero. Then he's going to wait until he sees a face, and when he recognizes that face, he's going to play whatever we recorded on channel one. Now, because this isn't a wait, he's going to automatically also move on to the next action, which is wave. So once he's played the mic and we're waiting for the wave, he's then going to take a photo and we're going to see what happens then. Okay. Okay. So can we use you for the Yeah, I'm going to be the this? face. Okay. okay. Professor E, let's use your face. So I'm going to put JD here and I'm going to choose the start button to begin running the script. Hey, is anybody there? Okay, so he's waiting, waiting for a face. Haha, I see you. <laughs> That is so awesome. So this was our first program that you made on your mobile device. And of course, if you want to reuse it, you can actually scroll up to the top of your list and there's a save button here. So we can push the save button, give it a file name. In this case, we'll call it uh, wait for face and take photo. So you can use it again and again to take photos of your friends and your program is actually gonna store the photos on your phone. Now we can do other things inside of the hamburger button. We can push the hamburger button here and we can load up Blockly. Now Blockly is the same UI that you would have seen inside of the Windows episodes of the robot program. So there's a lot of the same functionality in there. We're not gonna create a script using Blockly in this episode. So we'll back out of there. And we return back to our main interface here. Why don't we do color tracking? That's my favorite Ooh. thing to demonstrate to people. Color tracking is a great one. Okay, so I'll turn the robot around here, and I just happen to have the, the red, red ball. football. Yeah, so this is the football that we like to use. It's the color red on it, and anything that has a nice bright color red for a ball is a good idea. Robots really like looking for the color red because there isn't a lot of red naturally in nature. And you're wearing a blue shirt, so the red will show nicely against that blue shirt. If you're wearing a red shirt, it's going to pick up you instead of the object. So mm -hmm. you're going to have to move out of the way or have the robot track your shirt. And if you're using the robot with a window behind you and the sunlight's coming through, you're not going to get, the robot's not going to be able to see the color very well. So you're going to want to make sure your robot is always facing the opposite direction of a light. So for example, in the studio here, we have lights all here, but nothing behind it. So this works well for uh, demonstrating this. So I'm going to choose the red color tracking checkbox on the main interface here. And I'm gonna just put the ball up in front of JD. And there you go. And JD sees the, sees the ball and he likes the ball. He likes tracking the ball. So his head is following the <clears throat> ball's movements. Yes. That's a lot of fun. In this episode, we showed you how to use the mobile application to control your Revolution JD robot. You always want to start with a freshly charged robot, and you can use any device that is Android or iOS based. So tablets or phones, all of them will work. You're going to download the app from the respective app store, and you're going to accept the terms of agreement and sign in using your easy robot username and password. Once you're in the application, you're then going to look for the robot app that you want to use. So at Easy Robot, we actually use apps within apps. There are over 3,000 different apps that you can access from within the Easy Builder application itself. For JD, you can hit the search button and find the default JD project or app. Within that app, you can control JD's movement with the arrows, or you can play the predetermined functions, or you can even go into the menu button or the hamburger button at the top, and you can select RoboScratch or Blockly to create your own program. There are lots of different options to explore within the app, including color tracking. Thanks for watching this episode, and we'll see you next time. What is the purpose of a servo profile? How does the mobile app connect to a robot? What two programming workspaces can be accessed via the hamburger menu button? Find the answers at therobotprogram.com.